Hey guys, Lewis here, and in today's video we're going to do a Pimsleur Arabic review. Specifically, I'm going to be looking at the Pimsleur Arabic Modern Standard uh, program because there are multiple, uh, you know, Arabic uh, programs in Pimsleur, and I'm going to be answering multiple question questions specifically. Uh, you know, what can you expect after completing the entire program? That is the three levels here of Pimsleur Arabic Modern Standard. Uh, what kind of, you know, at what level can you have uh, like uh, conversations essentially? And I'm also going to show you multiple aspects of, uh, you know, the, the, the language and what you can expect in each of those aspects, namely pronunciation, uh, vocabulary, and grammar after completing the three levels. I'm also going to show you how you can get Pimsleur Arabic for a lot less because uh, if you go on the website right now, you'll see that it's $350 and there is currently a 30% discount on all of the programs, but it's still pretty expensive. So <clears throat> the long story short for uh, that last point about pricing is, uh, I have included a link in the description of this video that you can click. It's going to lead you on the Pimsleur website on a page that is not advertised directly on the website. You will be able to create a free account and try out um, uh, Pimsleur Arabic and also benefit from a uh, subscription plan uh, after that, which is going to be about $21 to $22 a month, which is going to get you access not only to Pimsleur Arabic, but also to all of the languages on the platform for only $21 to $22 a month. So it's a lot less expensive than actually paying the $350 here. All right, so let me get into uh, what I want to talk about uh, here on uh, with Pimsleur. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go on the website so that you get a an idea of what to expect if you actually, uh, you know, if you click the link and get the free trial and if you decide to actually pursue uh, Pimsleur and continue working with it. So this is basically what it is. Now, I'm doing Korean right now but the Arabic uh, program is, is essentially the same. They're all the same, you know, all Pimsleur languages. So what you get is here you can see 30 lessons per level. So with Korean, just like with Arabic, you get uh, three levels and each level has 30, uh, 30 lessons. So this means that one level is going to be about a month because you're expected to do one lesson a day. So with um, Pimsleur Arabic, Modern Standard, you're going to be, uh, you know, the entire program is going to be compressed in three months. It's really not long, it's one daily lesson. I'm gonna go on the uh, fifth lesson here of, uh, you know, Korean, but it's the same for uh, Arabic. And just to show you the structure of a lesson, now you'll see here that there's an audio player and here there are uh, or skills that you need to to get during that lesson and here you have a bunch of activities for uh, reviewing the lesson but as you can see the main content is really that audio lesson uh, all the reviewing stuff I personally don't do it I think it did not exist in the past the original Pimsleur <coughs> Pimsle method has always been this uh, this audio content you get a player here by the way you can also download the app and download the lesson for offline listening and you get the 30 minute lesson and that's basically it you just press play you're commuting or you're working out you're cleaning your house uh, you can just listen to the lesson and you're you will be prompted to participate in the lesson that's it you only need to do a 30 min minute lesson every single day very very convenient now each of the of those uh, lessons, each of the 30 minute lesson is going to be centered around a conversation. So typically at the beginning of the lesson, you're going to be listening to two Arabic speakers, you know, in you know modern standard Arabic, they're going to talk, have a conversation and it gets progressively harder. You know, the, the first lessons are easy and at the end it gets a lot harder. And so you listen to that conversation and then an English speaker is going to break down uh, that conversation and explain it to you and actually ask you questions so that at the end of the lesson, you're actually able to 
reproduce and participate in that conversation on your own. So it's going to be very progressive and there's a lot of participation, but you're not required to actually sit down and read a textbook, which is really, really convenient. All right, so essentially this is what you can expect with uh, Pimsleur uh, Arabic or any uh, version of any language of uh, Pimsleur. Now, is it effective? Can you actually become fluent with Pimsleur Arabic? Uh, how long is it going to require? And how good of a pronunciation, vocabulary, and grammar can you expect to get at the end of the three months? Well, I'm going to break down, as I said, this, uh, this conversation into three points, but I just want to give you my general sort of overview of uh, my general answer of how uh, is Pimsleur Arabic effective? And the answer is absolutely yes. First of all, because you don't need to invest any time in it. You're just uh, listening, you know, while doing something else. Not only that, but also there is no other Arabic program out there that allows you to get from an absolute beginner level up to the level at which you're going to get with Pimsleur, uh, with uh, Pimsleur Arabic in just three months. It's extremely effective. Now, let's just be clear. You're going to be able to have conversations with uh, native, you know, Arabic speakers, but you know, at the end of the three months, it's not necessarily going to be like uh, fluent conversations, you know, necessarily. But this is, in my opinion, the best level at which you can get in just three months. This is a very rapid, very effective, very condensed uh, program. So it's absolutely worth it because at the end of the three months, you will get a good level on which you can actually, you know, uh, build up. And so I'm going to break down this conversation into uh, three points, pronunciation, grammar, and vocabulary. So first of all, uh, pronunciation, well, you know, pronunciation, actually, I think a lot of people dread Arabic pronunciation because, you know, uh, some of the sounds are very different from uh, the sounds in English. And, you know, I think there is reason to, to uh, have some level of anguish here. However, <clears throat> What you need to understand is that no matter no matter the language that you're trying to learn, whether it be Arabic, uh, you know, Tahitian or French, whatever it is, there are not so many different sounds. Like on Earth, uh, when you look at the entirety of human languages, uh, it goes from Hawaiian, which has about 15 different sounds. Uh, very easy to reproduce those sounds up to, you know, some uh, countries in the, um, I think it's called, I always mess up this name, but the ca Caucasus. In the Caucasus, it's like uh, Southern Russia, uh, you know, a bunch of countries which are not very well known. Those countries in the Caucasus, they have languages that go up to 60 different sounds. So it's a lot more. And most languages, I don't know specifically for Arabic, but most languages have uh, you know, somewhere in between, like, you know, f with English and French, it's about 30 different sounds. So all of this to say that there are not a lot of different sounds, even for the most complicated languages. Typically, after a few weeks of Pimsleur, you will find that you can actually reproduce most of the sounds uh, in, in Arabic or in any language that you're trying to learn pretty, pretty well. Okay, you're not going to be like, uh, un, uh, not you're, you know, people are going to understand that you're not a native speaker, but you're going to be able to reproduce those sounds, uh, uh, you know, well enough that people can understand you and they're actually pretty impressed. There are typically going to be a few sounds, you know, two or three sounds that are still going to be hard after a few weeks of Pimsleur, but you know, it's not, you know, pronunciation is definitely not a challenge with Pimsleur. Okay, so now let's talk about grammar. Now, the reason why I, I talk about grammar and I'm going to talk about vocabulary in, in the end, at, uh, uh, you know, in last place, is because a lot of people I feel like they dread pronunciation and grammar when in reality, the hardest part, anyone who has ever learned uh, any language on their own, just like me, you know, I've learned uh, English, I've learned uh, Japanese, on my own I've learned Italian, you know for a fact that the hardest part of language learning is, is uh, vocabulary. But a lot of people tend to overestimate uh, the importance, not the importance, but how much 
things you need to learn as far as pronunciation and, and grammar. So grammar is also not that hard. As a matter of fact, uh, there is not a lot of grammar to be learned in any language. Most of the grammar that you're going to learn in you know Arabic can actually be fit in a one-year college course or about two years of high school. So it's very limited because when you think about it, you know, college classes, you have maybe, you know, if you take uh, an Arabic course, you're, go you're going to have two classes uh, per week. Maybe it's going to be a total of maybe four hours. It's not that long, you know, just in those four hours for the entire year, you're going to be able to um, to learn pretty much everything you need to know about the Arabic uh, grammar. Now, the, um, the reason why college classes and schools, you know, if you ever uh, if you've ever taken Arabic in school, which I think is unlikely, probably uh, it's not that popular of a language to be taught, you know, in, in high school or even in college, but if you uh, have taken that in, in school or in college, then uh, the reason why they do more than one or two years is because they keep on repeating the same grammar over and over again in, you know, more complex ways with more exceptions, with more and more complex sentences. That's essentially it. Now, the issue with the way in which uh, Arabic grammar is, told, is taught, um, you know, traditionally, and you know, that's the case with uh, most languages, is that it's taught in a non-organic way, meaning that, for example, if, I, if I'm going to teach you, uh, you know, conjugation, I'm going to teach you about, you know, like, I give, you give, she gives, and so on, in a very linear way. It's, um, it's you know, grammarians and um, linguists like this because it, it gives a sense of, you know, order and, um, and uh, discipline and completeness. But as a matter of fact, this is a, you know, I, I actually wrote down an analogy here. It's like you're, you plant a new tree and you expect it to suddenly sprout one huge perfect leaf instead of having first, you know, twigs and branches. That's essentially it. And the reason why this is really bad is because number one, uh, you need to be very self-motivated not to quit. And uh, this is because if you learn a language in this way, if you learn Arabic in this non-organic way, I give, you give, she gives, etc., you're, yeah, you're being very, very complete and learning every tense or every grammatical points uh, very well, but then you're not actually covering the most common stuff. So with Pimsleur, what is going to happen is that the learning is going to be much more intuitive. They're not going to focus on, you know, teaching you everything that you need to know in the present tense or everything that you need to know in the past tense. It's going to be a mix of all the grammar that is, you know, the most common in Arabic. So, uh, you know, all the most common stuff, you're going to be exposed to it very, very quickly. And at the end of the, of the three levels, you will have a very good grasp of uh, that grammar. <clears throat> you know, with uh, traditional methods with school, you learn it in a sequential way. And, you know, at the end of a few months, then, and then, you know, you know some grammar pretty well, but some very, very common stuff you have never heard about. And so you're not able to have conversations, unlike with uh, Pimsleur Arabic, just after three months, you're pretty functional. You're not like a native speaker or anything, but you have a pretty good level for someone who's been studying for three months, okay? All right, and now the other reason why uh, Pimsleur is really great at teaching grammar is because, <clears throat> Um, you know, I think a lot of people dread uh, grammar in general, and with Pimsleur, it's not exposed, it's not taught in a way that is explicit. So they're not going to tell you exactly, oh, this is this uh, grammatical rule, and you need to do, you know, subject plus noun plus this and that. <clears throat> you will get some of that, but very little of that. Most of the grammar that you're going to be exposed to, you're going to immerse yourself in it through the conversations. And this is actually a very effective approach. And I used to be very skeptical of this because, you know, how can you really learn something if it's not explained to you in a structured way, right? But the truth of the matter is my own experience and, uh, you know, with learning languages and I've, I've seen a lot of people is, you know, if you learn 
uh, grammar in a way that's explicit. Like in the school system, they teach you subject plus noun plus this and that, and then do the exercises. It's less effective than just actually being exposed to actual content, actual conversation, actual sentences, listening to them and just letting your brain actually do the decoding. And this is not just my own experience. If you take uh, the experiment uh, done by uh, Dr. Paul Pimsler, by the way, if you didn't know, you know, Pimsler comes from the name of Dr. Paul Pimsler. He was a researcher in uh, applied linguistics. He did an experiment <clears throat> In college, in college classes, where he would uh, teach uh, with his colleagues about uh, French pronouns, which is a pretty uh, difficult point, or so I was told. I don't know. I'm a native French speaker, so I don't know. But it's pretty difficult. And the experiment was: you had two groups. One group where they taught French pronouns through the Pimsleur method, essentially just exposing them to conversations and you know phrases and sentences with audio, a lot of audio content and drills. And that was only for one hour. They did one hour. And the other group was doing, you know, regular sort of college classes for one week, uh, you know, teaching them uh, about uh, French pronouns. At the end of the one week uh, and at the end of the one hour for the other group, they actually tested the two groups and they found that actually the group that did the one hour of just listening and being immersed in the language, not getting actual explicit instru instructions, actually did better at uh, the test at recognizing French pronouns and using them in the right way. So this illustrates how a more organic and intuitive approach and learning languages by ear is actually a lot more uh, effective than, uh, you know, just like regular textbooks and, you know, Arabic classes and, and all of these kinds of things. All right, so I think I'm almost done with grammar. I'm just going to touch on the last uh, grammatical point, which is pronouns and verbs. Now, this is similar to what I talked about, but, you know, in any language course, what's going to happen is about 50% of the material in that course is going to be uh, about uh, pronouns and verbs because there are lots of things to talk about with pronouns and verbs. Uh, specifically, there are lots of exceptions like uh, regular verbs, irregular verbs. With pronouns, there are lots of exceptions as well. And... A lot of people, for a lot of people, this is a pretty big source of anguish because, uh, you know, so many exceptions, essentially. For example, a verb in French can take up to 130 forms, according to Dr. Pimsleur. And so, um, this is something that you probably would be uh, worried about with other approaches, but with Pimsleur is... Uh, the thing that's going to happen is that you're going to get exposed to so much audio content. You're going to be listening to so many conversations in Arabic. You will not need to worry about those exceptions with pronouns and verbs and, you know, any grammatical points. Uh, because you will have heard so, listened to so many conversations, you will start, your brain will automatic, automatically start to decode the pattern of those exceptions. And you will see that actually the exceptions actually follow certain patterns. Some do not, but the majority of them, they do, even though there are exceptions. Those exceptions have patterns, and you will be able to intuitively uh, decode them with Pimsleur. All right, now let me finish this video um, uh, ta uh, with uh, vocabulary, because this is actually a hard point. So. Vocabulary is by far the most difficult aspect of language learning. And, you know, I've learned multiple languages. I've seen uh, a lot of people try to learn multiple languages or even one, and most of them fail. And it's because, for the most part, vocabulary is really hard. If you want to be a fluent speaker of Arabic, you need to know about the 5,000 most common words to have very good conversations in Arabic. That's 5,000 words. That's a lot more than the, you know, uh, 60 possible sounds of like pronunciation sounds in, in uh, you know, languages in the Caucasus. So it's, it's a lot more. It's really difficult. It's a challenge. Uh, if you know 5,000 words, the 5,000 most common words, you should be able to recognize about the 98% 
uh, about 98% of all the words that are used in a conversation in Arabic. So it's a lot of words, you know, 98%. That leaves very few words that you will not know. Now, um, if you, if you want to learn 5,000 words, what you need to do, for example, is you need to work, learn 10 new words every single day for a year and a half. Okay, that does not sound hard. I mean, 10 words a day, it's not hard. But the problem and where it goes wrong for most people, and they don't even realize it, is you add 10 new words a day, but you should not forget about you know the words that you added on previous days so for a lot of people they learn the 10 new words but they're going to forget very very quickly about the the words that they learned in you know uh, in the past and so they're leaking buckets of information they don't retain stuff and it's you know it's such a shame because uh, that's <laughs> that's a very simple reason for failing to learn any language and yet people are just you know, doing this mistake over and over again. So, um, the solution here with Pimsleur, the reason why you will not have this problem, there are two reasons, is because number one, Pimsleur actually exposes you to, to this vocabulary with a certain sense of urgency, meaning that uh, you will be exposed to vocabulary, not with, you know, lists of vocabulary to, you know, that you need to remember and do some, you know, rote memorization. You will have uh, conversations and then you will be prompted to participate in those conversations. So for example, someone says something in Arabic in the lesson and the English speaker is gonna tell you, okay, uh, have you heard this? Now answer this guy, tell him that. And <clears throat> because you're prompted to participate and it sounds like an actual conversation, there's a sense of urgency, which makes it so that not only are you recalling the information, you're trying to recall it, but to you, it sounds almost like a real, a real situation. So it's a lot more memorable, which is very important. Now, the second reason why Pimsleur actually does a very good job of helping you retain the vocabulary in the long term, as opposed to just, you know, forgetting it and becoming a leaking bucket of information, is because it uses something that is called, uh, I don't really use this expression, it's called graduated interval recall. I call it space repetition. So essentially what this means is, I'm gonna show you a, a graph, um, space repetition, I think is, is a better term. It's, okay, space repetition. And as you can see on my screen here, if you're, if you're watching, essentially with PIMSA what happens is, well, well with most uh, traditional learning methods, you know, school, textbooks, etc., you're going to learn some word or phrase on day one. And then what's gonna happen is that you're not going to review it, maybe for a long time. But the thing is, the memory of that word or that phrase is going to fade pretty, pretty quickly, okay? Super quick. That's the forgetting curve here. With Pimsleur, what happens is that if you learn a word, a few seconds after, it's, it's getting reviewed, a few minutes after, and then in the lesson after, on the day after, and then a week after, and then two weeks after. It's spaced in this way, and as you can see on the graph here, you learn a new word, you forget it a little bit, but then boom, it's reviewed. And then you forget it a little bit, but it's reviewed again, and so on. And every time that you review a word or a phrase, or it also applies to grammatical points and pronunciation uh, rules in a way, Every time that you review something in Pimsleur, because Pimsleur is based around graduated interval recall or spaced repetition, every time that you review this information, the, the forgetting curve actually flattens out. And so you're going to remember this information much, much, much longer. Okay, so uh, this is a pretty solid scientific uh, uh, finding. So that's uh, probably, I would say, the main factor, the main reason why Pimsleur is so much more effective than other language learning methods. All right, now, now let's talk specifically about like how many words you can actually understand, <clears throat> you, will, you can expect to get with Pimsleur uh, Arabic. So um, if you look on the Pimsleur website, you will find that with uh, you know, any language that they offer, every single level is going to teach you about 300 to 500 words, new words. So with Arabic, you have three levels. If you count about, let's say, 
we cut the apple in half and we say it's going to be 400 new words per level. You have three levels, so it's 1,200 uh, words. The most common 1,200 words that you're going to learn in Pimsleur Arabic. Now, it is far from the 5,000 words that you need to understand, uh, to understand, uh, you need to be fluent in a conversation, but you know, it's only three bumps, so you know, what were you expecting? But a, a thousand and two hundred new words, just to give you an order of idea, if you know the most common 2,000 words, it's going to be about, uh, you're going to know about 80% of the words that are used in a conversation. That's for 2,000 words. So for a thousand and two hundred words, I don't know exactly, my guess would be that you probably know about 70% of the words in a conversation, you know, because the, the, um, the most common words are used very, very often. So 1,200 words is actually going to get you very, very far. You're actually going to be able to have conversations with native speakers. They're not going to be able to use very complicated words, but they're going to be pretty impressed that you started to learn Arabic three months ago. And if someone actually sees you, like your friends and family, they see you speaking Arabic, they're actually going to think that you're fluent, even though you're not. So if I had to guess, this would be about, you know, using the European framework for languages about an A2 level, uh, I would say. And um, another thing that you should remember as well is that a lot of words actually become guessable. So meaning that if you know 1,200 words, the most common 1,200 words, uh, you can use that knowledge and the context of the conversation to guess a high percentage of words that you would not understand otherwise. So that's a pretty big uh, advantage as well. All right, so that's pretty much it. I think that's all I wanted to talk about regarding uh, Pimsleur Arabic. Once again, if you want to get the subscription plan and the free trial for Pimsleur uh, Arabic, uh, check out the link in the description and uh, let me know whether or not you, you like the, the program by leaving a comment in the comment section. I'll see you next time.